This week's Farm Basics is brought to you by SatShot.com. Satellites aren't just for NASA anymore. Use the power of satellite imagery to create variable rate management zones in your fields. To reduce input costs and increase yields on your farm, go to SatShot.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk a little about water quality and its impact on herbicides. You know, when you're putting a herbicide into a spray tank, it's not just straight herbicide that's getting sprayed out in a field. In many cases, you're putting a very low volume of herbicide with a very high volume of water. For example, you may be spraying 20 gallons of water and just a few ounces of herbicide per acre, 43,000 square feet. You better have some good quality water if you want that herbicide to work 100%. Within the last couple years here, Darren and I traveled over to Israel and I had the opportunity to drink some water that there was an awful lot of stuff in it. And you know what? <laughs> flavor, Brian, flavor, <laughs> character. Well, no, seriously though, <laughs> on the water bottles that you get in the United States, let's say you go to buy a bottle of water. Does it say in there how much calcium's in there or how much magnesium or nitrate or anything else? Nope, doesn't say that on the label. In Israel, it does. So anyway, the point is, here I was about to drink this bottle of water and Darren goes, whoa, whoa, Brian, I think you might want a beer instead because look at all that stuff that's in the water. But you know what? There is no pure water in the world, none whatsoever. There's other stuff in it things like calcium and magnesium. Now, our bodies as humans, we need calcium and magnesium, so it's no big deal. But do our herbicides need calcium and magnesium? <laughs> in many cases, no. And what can happen with this magnesium or calcium in the water is those are positively charged ions or cations, so they will attract negatively charged particles. Well, some of those negatively charged particles may be your herbicides like glyphosate, for example, yep. or Roundup. Now, if you're putting Roundup into a spray tank with very hard water, a lot of times some of that Roundup gets neutralized. And what ends up happening is you have to use a really strong rate of Roundup to control a weed that maybe you could get by with a lower amount of Roundup if you just had cleaner water. Yep, so that becomes a big problem for farmers. It's not a huge deal if Let's say you're just spraying a little bit around the house. You can triple up your rate of Roundup. Well, you spend an extra 50 cents, whoop de doo But if you're gonna go out and spray 3,000 acres of crop, and you need to increase your rate by even 20% to accommodate that extra calcium and magnesium that's gonna tie up some of that Roundup, that's just not gonna work. So what farmers will do is they will put additives or adjuvants into that water, things that will actually tie up that calcium and tie up that magnesium, something like ammonium sulfate, for example, so then the Roundup still works to its maximum effectiveness. Well, the other thing that happens in water is it could be higher pH or lower pH, yep. and the pH of the water, the acidity level of the water, makes a big difference too. Some herbicides like a lower pH, like glyphosate, for example, seems to work a little bit better when the pH is lower. Other products like a higher pH. Many of the sulfonylurea type products, something like Accent, for example, Example, likes a neutral or even a little higher pH. It works better. Yep, but what happens in these pHs that are, let's say, very high, let's say you had a, a water pH of 9, and you say, oh no, there's not much water that has a pH of 9. Oh yeah, there's lots of water across the United States that has a pH of 9. Well, literally, you can put some herbicides in there, and within a couple hours, that herbicide is all gone. It's all done. There's no, there's no herbicide left. Totally gone, yes, totally neutralized because of that high water pH. So again, you might put something in the water to lower the pH and then that herbicide can work for you. Well, the point of today's discussion is whether you're just spraying a little bit around the house or you're spraying great big fields, you probably should check your water quality to see if it's compatible with the herbicides that you're using and, to control And weeds. most importantly, once you've checked that water quality, then talk to an agronomist, somebody who's going to make a herbicide recommendation for you and say, look, I'm starting with this water. I want to use this herbicide. What do I need to throw in the tank to make that work to its maximum effectiveness. Water quality is one of those things why it works for one person, but a few miles down the road it may not work for the other person. And one of those weeds that sometimes gets through herbicides is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to get it under control coming up later in the show. <laughs>